John Alzheimer is known as one of our nation's most recognized credit experts. Having worked for 28 years in the credit industry, John has become one of the most prolific speakers about credit and the go-to authority on answers to credit-related questions. Credit Countdown with John Alzheimer. Hello, my name is John Alzheimer. I'm a consumer credit expert. I have been in the credit industry for almost 30 years. This is my 30th year. I have spent time at FICO, which is the credit scoring company, and I've spent time at Equifax, which is one of the three generally recognized credit reporting agencies. TransUnion and Experian are the other two. So you may see a bunch of gobbledygook written up on the board here. Let me explain what I'm gonna be talking about today in this video blog. I'm going to talk about what in the world do those credit scores mean? You see on your credit reports or on websites or on your credit card accounts, you get your credit scores periodically. They generally fall between 300 and 850. Those are the published ranges for both FICO and Vantage scores, credit scoring systems. We know that higher is better, so you wanna have as high of a credit score as possible. Low is not good, and if you have really low scores, you could be denied credit, or it could be super expensive for you to finance things like automobiles and loans and mortgages and to have credit card accounts. But what do those numbers actually mean? What do they mean? What does a 700 mean? What does a 750 mean? Or what does a 650 mean? Here's what it doesn't mean. It doesn't mean, hey, 750 is better than 700, let's give this guy a loan. Or 650 is worse than 700, let's deny this guy. That's not what it means. Even though I think as consumers, we tend to focus really much, you know, almost obsessively or unhealthily, we have this unhealthy obsession with the number, right? And as long as the number is really, really high, we're happy, because we are getting really good treatment from our lenders. We're getting aggressive interest rates, we're getting aggressive offers, we're getting a lot of credit thrown at us at competitive rates and terms, and that's why we tend to focus on the number. Plus, whenever we talk about credit scores, we always talk about how to improve that number, making that number into that number, or that number into that number. So I get it. It's reasonable for people to focus just on the number without really thinking one level deeper than this, and trying to figure out what in the world does that number mean. I'm gonna tell you what it means. Every credit scoring model that's developed has what's called a performance definition. It is the stated design objective of the model. I'm gonna make this real easy. Think of a butter knife, all right, in your kitchen. What is a butter knife used for? To spread butter and jelly and peanut butter and things that you would generally spread on bread. That is the design objective for a butter knife. But people will use it to screw flathead screws and they'll use it to, to unstick things. So people will tend to apply it to different tasks that it wasn't designed to, or intended for when it was developed. Credit scoring systems have a similar objective in their design. And for credit scoring systems like FICO and Vantage Score, it's to predict the likelihood of a consumer going 90 days past due or worse in the subsequent 24 months after scoring. So let me repeat that again. The credit score is designed to predict the likelihood of you going 90 days past due or worse in the 24 months after the score is calculated. That's it. It's not designed to do anything else other than that. So what these numbers actually mean is they actually give a probability or odds for those of you who go to Vegas and gamble. I'm terrible at it, so I try not to go because it's just like throwing my money away. But some of you are really good at it. I know you are. You know how to calculate the odds of poker hands. You know how to calculate the odds of blackjack. And you know, how, you know, hey, if I do this, that might happen. If I do this, I have a better chance of this happening. It's the same thing with credit scores. They help lenders to predict the likelihood of you doing that or not doing that. And obviously, these scores all have a probability that's underneath them and the lenders understand it. Lenders go through great lengths to study and validate and do implementation studies when they use credit scores as part of their processes to understand what do consumers who have these different scores, what is their likelihood of doing this? So, and, and from here on out, everything that I'm gonna put up here is an example. Okay, I don't want any of you to say, John Alzheimer said people with a 650, their odds of doing this are 10 to one, or 750, John Alzheimer said it's 50 to one. No, no, no. 
This is an example to illustrate how this works. So let's say hypothetically that I'm a lender and I'm about to start using a credit score in my underwriting process as I'm going to study and I'm gonna do a validation and I'm going to understand what it means to implement scores into my underwriting and risk assessment processes. And let's just say that those studies in this example indicate that for my particular customers, people who have say, for example, 650 to 659, so that 10 point score band, those are called score bands or score ranges. So someone who falls in this score band and score range, for example, I'm not sure how many more times I need to say it, for example, may have the odds of doing this are 100 to one. So for every one person that goes 90 days past due or worse, I'm gonna have 100 that don't. What I don't have is a crystal ball. I don't have a crystal ball to tell me who this one person is, where I could deny that person credit and not have to worry about them doing this. As my scores go higher and higher and higher, my odds get better. Better for the consumer, better for the lender. So let's just say, hypothetically, in this example, that at a 700, I see 200 people to one. One does this, 200 do not do that. That's great, those are great odds, right? Again, I have no idea who this person's going to be because there is no crystal ball. 750, now we're, now we're cooking. So let's just say hypothetically, now we're at 400 to one. So again, one person's gonna do this, 400 or not. That's why people who have 750s get great deals because the likelihood of them missing payments are so low that the lenders can afford to give them good deals. So let's go, but let me give you kind of like a, a bad example, right? So this is gonna be an example of where someone has a score of, let's say 580, we'll go up here for this one. So 580 to 589. Sorry about the handwriting. We know this is not a good score range. Nobody would reasonably say, well, 580, hey, that's not bad. No, 580 is not good, not good at all. It's 130 points below the national average. You want higher than 580. The reason you want higher than 580 is because again, your odds of doing this are much higher. So again, this is an example, but what you may end up seeing for something like this is four to one. So you have one person who does this and four who do not. Ugh. Those are not good odds because that means that one out, of, one out of every five people that you approve are gonna go 90 days past due or worse in the next 20, uh, 24 months. That's why people who have scores like this get such high interest rates or get declined outright. They have to make enough money off of the four people who are gonna pay the bills to subsidize the amount that they're gonna lose from the one person who won't. So that is what is more important to the lender than, this, than just the number. For us, the, the number is what's important. For the lender, the understanding of all this is what's really important because they can create an underwriting policy, risk assessment policies, avoid certain high-risk consumers, be real aggressive in the offers they make to other consumers. So you still wanna shoot for as high of a credit score as possible. I don't wanna say you don't need to do that, but understand that when you do have a really, really high score, the reason lenders treat you so well is because of this. The odds of you going delinquent are so low that they feel really, really comfortable doing business with you. And that's why you get those great deals. That's why you try to earn those high scores. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, comment section below, please. We'll talk again soon. Have a great rest of your day. For more videos and credit tips from John Olsheimer, go to www.tradelinesupply.com.